good morning friends today we are going to discuss a very important technology in genetics that is dna fingerprinting so what is actually dna fingerprinting we all know that fingerprinting fingerprinting means we take the print of the thumb so that is called fingerprinting so just like we are taking the print of the dna that is known as dna fingerprinting so how the dna fingerprinting technology is going on before that uh, i will discuss a, a brief background of the dna fingerprinting everybody know that uh, we received the characters or the characters present in our body is actually inherited from the parents so parents characters are transferred to the children so the children is similar to the parent but actually the children is not a child is not exactly similar exactly replica or exactly identical to their parents why the child is different from their parents the main reason is that during the sexual reproduction the gamete formation takes place during the gamete formation a very important process that is known as a recombination the genes are mixing recombination and during the fertilization the two gamete are mixing with each other and forming the zygote from the zygote a individual is developing so this is one of the reason the recombination and the mixing of the characters of the parent is one of the reason why the child is different from their parent another reason is that when cell division taken place that is during the gamete formation cell division taken place so during the cell division occasionally mutation taken place mutation is the sudden change in the genetic constitution of an organism so this mutation and the recombination genetic recombination these are the two reason why a child is different from their parent okay so uh, let us see uh, actually the character is determining by the gene so what is actually the gene where is the gene present we know that a gene is actually the segment of the dna so that means a gene is present on the dna dna is present in the chromosome okay the, so then what is actually the dna dna is a long chain double stranded helically coiled long chain of the polymers so what is the unit of the polymer what is the monomer the monomer is called nucleotide so nucleotides are undergoing Uh, join with each other and forming a long chain that is a polymerization using the phosphodiester bond and forming the long chain that is chain is known as the actually dna it is a double helical chain so that is a dna so the uh, gene present on the dna so the sequence actually uh, the sequence on the dna is a formed by four nucleotide so what are the four nucleotide guanine nucleotide adenine nucleotide thymine nucleotide and cytidine nucleotide these are the four nucleotide this nucleotide repeat, repeated millions of the times and forming this dna okay so when we comparing the sequence actually the uh, dna fingerprinting is related with this sequence so when we compare the sequence of the two person whether it is a negro and the european or it may be an asian between asian and the european or between asian and the negro you can see that 99.9% of the dna sequence are identical how much 99.9% dna sequence in two person are identical so i different from you or the two two individual different from each other only about to point 1 percent so this point 1 percent difference showing different community different religion different uh, nations people in the world is identical with 99.9 percent similar similarity only point 1 percent is different this point 1 percent showing the difference between the two individual then the question arising why the or how the point 1 percent so where the 1.1 percent difference is there this 0.1 percent difference is actually present in the dna sequence this 0.1 percent difference is near about 20 nucleotide minimum and 100 nucleotide maximum so between 20 and 100 nucleotide sequences is different in each and every individual 
this 20 to 100 nucleotide that are different from each individual is known as the VNTR. VNTR means that this 20 to 100 nucleotide repeated along the length of the DNA number of times. And this repetition is, uh, there is no sequence, this repetition is randomly present on the length of the DNA. So this sequence is known as the variable number of the tandem repeat. VNTR, it is known as the VNTR, variable number of the tandem repeat. Suppose uh, this is the DNA. So along the length of the DNA, this sequence, uh, 20 to 100 nucleotide sequence, uh, this sequence uh, repeat uh, randomly. Uh, at one place it, uh, it is there, and uh, some, sometimes you can see here, sometimes you can see here, sometimes you can see here. So it is randomly repeated, the sequence is randomly repeated. This small sequence of the 20 to 100 nucleotide is known as a VNTR. VNTR means a variable number of the tandem repeat. Okay. So this is actually uh, the unique sequence present in each and every individual. No two individuals having same VNTR. So the possibility of having two individual same VNTR is 300, 1 out of the 300 million. 1 out of 300 million people say having identical VNTR. So between two individuals having VNTR is very impossible. One only in the 300 million people, it may be repeated. So, so this VNTR is actually uh, the uh, the thing uh, is actually the key point. The VNTR is actually the key point uh, for this uh, DNA fingerprinting. We have to isolate uh, this VNTR and uh, compare the VNTR with the other person. So we can identify a particular person. For example, a crime is uh, happened. Uh, in this crime, uh, we are supposing uh, two or three people uh, performed this crime. Out of this three or two or three people, uh, one man may be the main culprit for this crime. We have to identify that person or that we collect the VNTR of the, these three person and the uh, person who died or killed. Uh, comparing this VNTR, then we can identify a particular person uh, who is done this crime. So for, the, for that purpose, we are using this VNTR. So VNTR helping to identify a particular person. So, so in the DNA fingerprinting, the main point is the VNTR. So what is actually VNT, uh, DNA fingerprinting? DNA fingerprinting is the mechanism or the technology of identifying a person with the help of the restriction analysis. Restriction analysis, why the word restriction analysis is used? Because restriction analysis means RN, uh, one, one enzyme is the RN, restriction endonuclease. When this restriction endonuclease is adding to this DNA, the DNA will cut into small pieces. Out of the many pieces, some of the pieces are the VNTR. So by using this restriction nucleus, restriction nucleus, we cut the DNA into smaller pieces. Out of these many smaller pieces, some of the pieces are the VNTR. So this VNTR, we separated and identified the particular person. So actually, DNA fingerprinting is the mechanism, is the technology of identifying a person by restriction analysis. Okay, so this VNTR, uh, VNTR identified at the first by two scientists. The name of the scientist is the Wyman, Wyman and White, White in the year 1980. So those two scientists first isolated and discovered this VNTR. Thereafter, the DNA fingerprinting technology is developed. The DNA fingerprinting technology is actually discovered by Alec Jaffray. Alec Jaffray. The scientist Alec Jaffray. So Alex Jaffray is known as the father of the DNA fingerprinting. Alec Jaffray. He discovered this uh, DNA fingerprinting in the year 1984 after four years discovered the VNTR discovered in 1980 and Alex discovered the DNA fingerprinting in 1984. So, so let us study uh, how the DNA fingerprinting uh, can be obtained or what, what are the different stages for obtaining the DNA fingerprinting. So this is actually the DNA fingerprint. See here, these are the two person A and B. This is the fingerprint of the A, this is the fingerprint of the B and this is the man who killed a particular uh, incident. So we have to identify the person who killed uh, 
uh, the particular person. So this is the DNA of the culprit, and this is the DNA sample of the two uh, person A and B. We supposing that A did this the crime or B did the crime, etc. Uh, so how to identify these people, sir? Comparing this DNA, uh, three people's DNA, and uh, we can say that uh, the C DNA fingerprint is very accurately match with B. So the crime is uh, done by B. B is the person, uh, the actual culprit. So like that, we can identify a particular person by using this mechanism. So DNA fingerprinting is the identification of a person by the restriction analysis, the restriction DNA analysis. Okay, see what are the different stages involved in the DNA fingerprinting. In the DNA fingerprinting, some of the stages are involved. These stages are, first, isolation of the DNA. We have to isolate the DNA. First point, isolation of the DNA. Then DNA amplification, because the DNA we isolated may be very small quantity. So this small quantity cannot be suitable for running a DNA fingerprinting technology. For that, this DNA can be amplified, it must be increased, the number must be increased. So DNA amplification, thereafter DNA fragmentation, the DNA we obtained must be cut into smaller pieces, that is known as a DNA fragmentation with the help of the restriction to nucleus. Then, electrophoresis, the DNA pieces are, uh, the DNA cut up into smaller pieces, we have to separate that pieces. So, separation of the DNA fragment is by the process electrophoresis. Thereafter, we have to identify a particular VNTR. For that, we apply the southern blotting technology, and then we apply the hybridization technology and finally we take the photograph and compare the photograph and can identify the person which who is the culprit of that incident we can identify so these are the different seven different stages so when these seven different stages are completing we can identify the person so dna fingerprinting is the technology to identify a particular person by restriction analysis of the dna Okay, so let us study each and every step separately. First, DNA isolation. So from where we, we get the DNA piece, DNA isolation. First point, we must get the DNA pieces. So where do we get the DNA pieces? The DNA pieces can be uh, isolated either from the semen or from the cell or from the tissue or from the hair follicle. Something, some like these materials, we can isolate the DNA. Suppose, we have taken the hair follicle. Hair, hair follicle means uh, the hair having at the base, uh, there are follicles, it is a living uh, and the hair is a uh, dead. Separate this uh, hair follicle from the hair follicle, we isolate the DNA. So this is the DNA, we isolate it from the hair follicle. Thereafter, second stage, uh, we have to amplify the DNA because this uh, DNA is a very little, very small quantity. That much quantity is not uh, sufficient for running a DNA fingerprinting, so it must be amplified. For the amplification, we are using the technique PCR, polymer chain reaction. By using the polymer PCR technology, polymer chain reaction, we can amplify this. Uh, one become two, two become the square method and square path method, it can increase uh, the number of the DNA may increase. Uh. So like that, uh, we produced uh, millions of the DNA fragment DNA. Millions of the copies of the DNA we produced by this technology PCR. That is the polymer chain reaction. So we got a sufficient quantity of the DNA. Then we apply in the next DNA fragmentation. Third method is the DNA fragmentation. Uh, suppose we have the DNA. This is a DNA having the VNTR. We don't know where is actually the VNTR is present. For that, this DNA must be cut into smaller pieces. Then identify the VNTR. Okay, so this DNA is cut into smaller pieces with the help of the enzyme REN. REN means restriction endonuclease. By applying the restriction endonuclease, the DNA will cut into smaller pieces, single stranded strand. So each strand will separate and it is giving single stranded DNA. Like this, this is the one DNA single stranded DNA. This is another single stranded DNA. This is the third single stranded. Like that, number of the single stranded DNA will produce when the REN restriction endonuclease, particular restriction, there are different types of restriction endonuclease. We apply in the, when we apply in the restriction endonuclease, the DNA will cut into single strand and also it will cut into smaller pieces. But when it is cutting into smaller pieces, it cannot cut the DNA at equal length. So some of the DNA having more length, some having less than that, some having still less than that. Like that, it cut the DNA into number of the segment, number of the pieces and all the pieces are different from each other in the length. 
and also the DNA sequence must be there. So uh, we have to separate. So uh, while applying the RNA restriction to nucleus, the DNA cut into single strand with the different length of DNA pieces are being cut. And now these DNA pieces have to be separated. And then identify the VNTR. Which one is the VNTR? So we are applying the next procedure that is known as a separation. For the separation of this single stranded DNA pieces with a different length, that is single stranded DNA with a different length is known as the RFLP. RFLP. That means a restriction fragment length polymorphism. Restriction fragment length polymorphism. That means a restriction means a restriction. The nucleus is used. Fragment means pieces, pieces of the DNA. Length means the length of the DNA piece. That is different from each other. So it is known as a polymorphism. Restriction length polymorphism. So we got a different length of single stranded DNA. Now we have to separate this DNA by the next method, number fourth, that is known as electrophoresis. So usually here we are using the gel electrophoresis or agarose of gel electrophoresis. This electrophoresis is a particular machine. The machine having the chamber. Suppose this is the chamber in the machine. This chamber having groove. This is the one of the groove. This is the another groove. Like that, grooves are present there. And inside it is an empty. It's a box-like structure. So we filling this chamber with the agarose. So the agarose. The agarose gel having minute molecules. These molecules when arranging them, it is forming space between that. So this is the agarose gel. So space present. This space acting as a network. So space acting as a sieve. So whatever we apply here, these materials are coming down. So coming down at the bottom. So when it is coming down, those material having length more, it will stay somewhere else here at the upper part. So little bit less length, it will come down little down and then stop there. Again, still less length that will come again down. So it will stop there and the smallest one that will stop at the bottom. So, so during this uh, gel electrophoresis, uh, so the machine is used, uh, the machine having the chamber, the chamber will take on the uh, agarose, material, agarose gel material, uh, the material acting as a sieve, uh, then the DNA sample will apply here. This uh, DNA sample will come downward. Uh, when it will come downward, uh, the DNA piece having more length uh, that will stop uh, first. Uh, then smaller one, then smaller one, then smallest one, like that the DNA will separate from each other. So for that, one more procedure we have to apply here. The DNA molecule is actually positive, actually negative. It is actually negative. So due to the negativity, wherever the positivity is there, it will move towards the positive. So for that purpose, we apply here the current. Low voltage in here about 50 millivolt current apply here. And this is the this is the negative terminal and here is the positive terminal. This is the positive terminal. So when applying the low voltage current and this DNA is negative, the DNA is attack, uh, attracting towards the positive. So due to this charge, the DNA also coming downward. So, so there are three reasons why the DNA pieces come down. One point it attracts and the positive terminal will attract to the negative charge. Another one, the sieve, the, it has a small molecule space present between that through this space or the space acting as a sieve so DNA coming downward and due to the gravity it is coming downward but, but when it is coming downward the largest one the longest one stay first it cannot come down so, and then the smaller one then smaller one the smallest one like that is moving down from the negative to positive terminal so after running at 10, 10 or 20 minutes by trial and error you can identify how many minutes it is requiring then we uh, off the uh, switch in. so the current supply is uh, off then we take this chamber outside this uh, acryl amide chamber polyacryl piece polyacryl amide chamber the gel electrophoresis chamber we take separate from that then from this the gel is present the gel is very slowly is ejecting out so by applying the force down here it is empty applying the force it can be separated out suppose this is the gel the gel having the DNA strand so DNA strand is separated first, we have taken the DNA, DNA cut with the restriction to nucleus, it produces a single standard DNA pieces with a different length and this DNA different length we can separate by using the gel electrophoresis. So the next stage, uh, we have to identify the VNTR. We have still not identified the VNTR, we just separated the DNA pieces into uh, separately. We, we cannot identify the VNTR, we have to identify the VNTR. 
for that purpose, we apply the another method that is known as the southern bloating method. So, what is actually southern bloating method? For the southern bloating method, we take a, a large petri dish. Sorry. We are taking a large petri dish. In this petri dish, we are taking a particular solution. In this solution, uh, the gel, we separated the gel. This we separate the gel. The gel is with the number of the DNA pieces are there. And this gel is putting in this petri dish that is containing a particular solution. And in this solution, is actually uh, on the on the gel plate. This is the gel plate. On the gel plate, we applying a nylon paper, nitrocellulose nylon paper. This the nylon paper will be particularly prepared a very thin nylon paper. This nylon paper it is made up of the nitrocellulose. This nylon paper we putting on this on this gel. Okay. When this nylon paper putting on the gel, so wherever the DNA is present, the DNA will stick on this nitrocellulose paper. See here, the DNA is sticked on this nitrocellulose paper, like this. So after a few minutes, we separate this nitrocellulose paper. So when the nitrocellulose paper is removed, you can see that the number of the lines are present on that. Each line is representing a segment of the DNA. So like that, we separate the DNA segment uh, from the nitro, uh, from the gel. So now the gel is useless. We discard the gel. So now the DNA is present on this nitrocellulose paper. That method is known as southern bloating. It is discovered by the scientist Southern. So it is known as southern bloating method. Okay. Then next, uh, we have to still we are not uh, we are totally unknown where is actually the VNTR is present. Our aim is to separate the VNTR. Okay. It may be VNTR, this may be VNTR. We have to identify the VNTR. For the identification of the VNTR, we apply another method that is known as the hybridization. That is the most crucial step in the DNA fingerprinting. So for the hybridization, we have to prepare a single stranded DNA. So this single stranded DNA. This single stranded DNA prepared very specially and it is applicable to most of the VNTR. So it has some of the nucleotide strands, this nucleotide, nucleotide is a complementary to the VNTR. So this prepared very specially, actually the Alec Jeffrey prepared in one method, but in India, this, uh, this uh, piece of the DNA, it is known as a probe, probe, it is actually uh, radioactive, this probe is actually radioactive, this radioactive probe in India is prepared by, is constructed by or discovered by a scientist, the name of the scientist is the Alex Jeffrey is actually very close contact with the Alex Jeffrey, that is the Dr. Lalji Singh. So Dr. Lalji Singh, Dr. Lalji Singh, he prepared and discovered this probe in India. So nowadays we in India we are using this probe discovered by Dr. Lalji Singh. He obtained this uh, DNA, DNA segment probe from the Bandit crate. Bandit crate. Branded crater, a snake, a very highly poisonous snake, branded crater. In the branded crater, the male having XX chromosome and a female having XY chromosome. From this Y chromosome of the branded crater, we, uh, he separated this probe, constructed this probe. Nowadays, this probe is using to identify the VNTR in India. So, the uh, DNA fingerprinting in the world is popularized by the Alec Jaffrey in India, it is developed by Dr. Lalji Singh. He used the probe from the Y chromosome of the female crater. Uh, remember, in the case of the banded crater, the male having XX chromosome and the female having XY chromosome. From this Y chromosome, the DNA probe is prepared and it is uh, uh, applied the radioactive label, so it is a radioactive probe. So wherever the radioactive probe is there, we can identify by emitting the light under the UV rays. So that is purpose of why it, uh, he produced the radioactive probe. In this next stage, there is a hybridization. So in the hybridization, actually what is doing, this nitrocellulose paper having this different length DNA, we take another petri dish, in this petri dish we put in this nitrocellulose paper. This nitrocellulose paper having the different length DNA. Okay, DNA standard, single standard DNA. In this single standard DNA, we are adding the probe prepared by according to the Dr. Lalji Singh. This probe we adding in this medium. So when this medium, this probe is adding, wherever the VNTR is present, 
that will go and uh, complementary pair with that DNA. Well, all the DNA are the single standard. Suppose now, uh, this is the VNTR. Suppose. So, suppose uh, this is the VNTR. And uh, that, if that is the VNTR. This is complementary to that. Uh, it will go there and it will attach with this by hydrogen bonding pair. According to the Charkov's rule. Suppose uh, here is also the, it will go, the VNTR is the, and the probe going to attach here. Okay. So at a, some places, some DNA fragment is a VNTR. Wherever the VNTR present, the probe will go and pair with it and produce the double stranded DNA. Okay. So after that, after a few minutes, uh, keeping this solution as such, uh, after a few minutes, uh, we are separating this nitrocellulose paper and washing this very properly. So during the washing, what happens, uh, all the DNA strand, it is not paired with the, the probe, will wash out uh, only those DNA having the probe attached, uh, double stranded, that will remain there. So this is the VNTR, this is another VNTR. So like that, we got the VNTR, this is the VNTR. How can I identify it? By applying the UV rays, uh, it will produce emit light uh, because it is uh, radioactive, uh, so we can identify this. So, uh, and, uh, Another method is that the last method we have we are requiring a, a solid proof for that uh, we are applying the photography method. So what happens uh, next stage uh, we uh, placing a X-ray sheet below that uh, we keeping the X-ray sheet. So when the X-ray sheet is uh, keeping below the light emitting radiation emitting from this uh, uh, double standard VNTR uh, the VN, wherever VNTR present uh, on the X-ray sheet uh, you can see the lines. Uh, like this lines will appear there. So this is the X-ray sheet, and this X-ray sheet develop a or photographic plate. X-ray not X-ray sheet, photographic plate. This photographic plate then expose uh, develop. Then after the development, you will get the uh, photography of this VNTR like that. VNTR we identify the VNTR. This is the we all these are the VNTR. So here actually. Uh, criminal case uh, to solve how the criminal case is solved. Uh, this is the suspected one, suspected one, and these two people's, uh, these these two people's um, uh, are uh, performed the for 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 crime. So to identify that, uh, we obtain the DNA from this and uh, comparing these three uh, DNA fingerprinting. So see here, this DNA fingerprinting uh, is very much a match to this one, not to this person. So the crime is uh, done by this one. So in this way, it is a. Uh, uh, we can identify the particular person who actually the crime uh, did the so, and it is uh, acceptable in the court also so for that uh, what have we taken actually the chromosome seventh chromosome of the a and the a chromosome second of the a and b chromosome 16 of the a and b then it uh, undergoing uh, performed the dna fragmentation then separation every procedure is uh, gone and then this is the final uh, photography of these two this is the C, person C. We comparing this DNA fingerprint with A and B. So we is exactly match with the C. The B one is exactly match with the C. Uh, C. So the crime is performed by the person D. So in this way, we can identify a particular person. That identification of a particular person by DNA fragmentation analysis is known as a DNA fingerprinting. Nowadays, this can be used for the parental dispute. Parental dispute. For example, this is the son. And the two person claiming that uh, the son is my or A or B saying that uh, the son is my own. So we can prove that uh, by this method. So here the C, the son and the A and B are the supposed father. So the B is very exactly matched with the C. So the father of the C is the B. So like that, uh, it also using for the uh, migration. Mig migration, the people, the person who migrated from some other country to India. So in India also a particular sequence of the DNA fingerprinting is there comparing to this and we can identify the person is not Indian. So for that only it is using the uh, parental dispute case uh, and a migration case, uh, it also using for various uh, case proofing in the criminology. So, so that is the DNA fingerprinting. I think it is sufficient for a brief account uh, for this uh, DNA fingerprinting. Okay. Thank you.